Hello, Mohawk. In this episode of MoCast, we uh, talk with interim president Bob Carrington. We shine the spotlight on a family that's donated millions of dollars to Mohawk College for the benefit of our students. And then we do a road trip where 40 colleges and universities from across Canada and outside our borders set up shop here at Mohawk College. So as we know, the search is on for Mohawk's next president. And uh, until we find that candidate, we have Bob Carrington as our interim president. Bob, how are you? I'm great. Two days in, ready to go. Okay. And you're still with us, so this is a good sign. It's a very good sign. Okay. Life before Mohawk, what is it that you did before you joined the college? That's a very long time that you're asking about, to be honest with you. So if I go back over the years, I uh, worked at International Harvester for a period of time. Went from there to the city of Burlington, or city of Hamilton first, and moved on to the city of Burlington where I spent 34 and a half years. Uh, mostly in the finance area as a treasurer and uh, towards the end of my career I became a general manager and ended up there being the acting uh, city manager for a period of time as well. So I have some experience of being acting in different roles or being in an interim position, so to speak. And so sort of the, the interim acting title is one that you've had here at Mohawk College more than a few times. So what have you done since you joined the college and when did you come here? It seems like you've been here forever, but that's not the case. So I came here in about May of 2009, which was shortly after I'd actually left the city of Burlington and I had just set up my uh, consulting business, but came up to, uh, for what I thought was a very short period of time. Little did you know. Little did I know that four years later, or four years plus later, I'd still be here doing different roles as, as well. So I've been Vice President of Corporate Services twice, uh, Vice President of Student Services only once, and also uh, fulfilling a position that they created uh, as the Associate Vice President of Facilities and Property Development. And of course... Have we had much property development since you've been here? All of it. <laughs> I seem to think, yes. We've done an awful lot of work here and uh, with a great team of people that, that we've had here, we've been really successful in the way we've done it. And I think it's all to the benefit of the students. So. I think I'd like to refer to this as the new Mohawk. As interim president, does everything go on hold until the new president is appointed? We're, we're just moving ahead with everything that has to be done. Certainly budgets are coming up, so we'll be working on the budget and re bringing that forward to the board. Uh, board uh, reports are, are being processed. We're working on our strategic priorities and wrapping up from the current years and also starting to plan for the coming year as well. So. Just every bit and piece of the operation is, is running full speed. Hey, so as interim president, you can't throw your hat in the ring to become president. Do you have plans for life after Mohawk or will you ever be leaving the college? Oh, I'm sure I'll leave the college at some point or they'll throw me out. I'm not sure which it'll be, but um, I have no, I, I, I stopped planning to be quite honest with you because every time I thought I was going to be doing something different, uh, there's been another twist and turn in, in what's been a crazy career for me and uh, for somebody that started in a mail room to end up where I am. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with my career and uh, so I never say never. I've had so many interesting and exciting opportunities presented to me. I've worked with so many great people and so seen so many good things happen to organizations that uh, I continue to look forward to the future as well. All right, so the Marshall family have been very generous and longtime supporters of the college, almost $2.5 million to date, which is fantastic. And joining us is alumni of Distinction recipient, Linda Marshall. Linda, how are you? I'm great, thanks. And we're here in the center that has your dad's name on the front and inside. How is that? It's a wonderful feeling to be here. We're very proud of this building. Yeah, it's a great addition to the college. So let's talk about uh, so your family stepping up yet again, uh, this time for the Rob McIsaac Access Bursaries, Future Ready Bursaries. Uh, how much? Or, sir, how much are you giving and uh, why are you uh, supporting the bursary? Um, we're putting $50,000 up for the match and we're hoping that we will get another 50000 So anyone who gives a donation, it's matched totally up to fifty. dollars uh, So if I give a dollar, the Marshall family puts in a dollar? That's correct. Why are you doing that? Well, first of all, we really care about the college and about students, and we're really impressed with Rob McIsaac and what he's done for Mohawk College. He was certainly a transformational leader, and we want to, it his gift to Mohawk to keep on giving to the students. You also have something else coming up too, an eighth annual benefit. What is that? 
Yes, um, on March 29th, it's our 8th annual Gerald Marshall Center benefit, and we're holding it at Michelangelo's. It's a fundraiser. All the money goes to students here at the college. It either goes to capital, which would be to this building to keep it state-of-the-art, or it goes into student bursaries. And last year we had close to 400 people, and we're hoping, I, my personal goal is 600, um, go big or go home. And uh, our tickets are $60 each. It includes dinner and fabulous entertainment. All right, so this is the eighth annual. Over those eight years, you have raised sort of ballpark how much? Uh, over 300 and close to 350000 just at the events. Right, and so you're saying that money goes here to the Stony Creek campus, skilled trades. What, what's your family's attachment then to this campus? Well, um, we, we feel very strongly, again, as I said, about the college and the students. And because we have a name building here, uh, we want to, it to continue to flourish and we want to enrich all the students that come to this campus. There was a time going to post-secondary education was an either-or proposition. You went to college or you went to university. That's changed. And we're seeing a lot of our college students go on to university and uh, university students choosing to come to college, Mohawk, after they graduate. So to tell us more about the Pathways Fair that's going on, we are joined by Linda Basso. Linda, your title is? Pathways Coordinator. Well, that's appropriate. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the fair. Okay. Number of universities and colleges who are here today. We have 40 universities and colleges here today, including Mohawk. Okay, from? Mostly from the Ontario public system. However, we do have a couple of universities from abroad, Wales and Australia. We also have a couple of U.S. institutions here and one from Alberta. Okay, so it's a packed house. It's, it's it a jam. Yeah. What's the value of the Pathways Fair for our students? For our students, we want them to be able to maximize their credits from Mohawk college so after they graduate from Mohawk they can apply for credit transfer at the universities so they can complete a degree in less time and for less money that sounds like a good deal mm -hmm. so this is an annual event yes um, why is this important for Mohawk to be hosting a fair it's important for Mohawk to be hosting a fair because not only our students want to go to other institutions, but our recruiters go out to other institutions and attend similar fairs to recruit students from other institutions here to Mohawk as well. The traffic flows both ways. Mohawk is a sending institution, but Mohawk is also a receiving institution for students. Okay. Now, I can't help but notice you've been going around with iPads. Correct. And this is this is new, right? Is this, this the first time we've done this? this what are you doing? The first time my department has used them. I understand that the scanners are fairly new. What we're doing is we're scanning one cards, and the one card office has loaned us this new technology. So we're going to have a sense of how many students attended our event, but also what program areas they're coming from. So we know which students are interested in degree completion pathways, and that will inform the pathways that we develop in the future. We will know what students want, so we can help them. Uh, find those pathways and create those pathways for them. So we're here with? Danielle. All right, Danielle, what program are you in? Accounting. Okay, what year? Fourth semester. Okay, so you're still a ways away from graduating, I think. Yeah. All right. Good. What do you think of the Pathways Fair? It's great. It's helping a lot. So it's, um, think about which courses we can go to, which university, answer some questions. It's, it's really helpful. Okay. So what are your plans for life after Mohawk? I'm planning to go to university. I just can't decide yet what to do. Maybe accounting as well. But I have to see. Okay. Now you're saying you are a mum yeah. with a teenager <laughs> and a four-year-old? Yes. So there's a chance that your, your daughter and you could both be going to university at the same time. Would yeah. she be cool with that? No, I don't think she's going to like it. Okay. <laughs> you have to go to different universities. Yes, for sure. She's going probably to McMaster. I'm thinking about Brock University, so different programs. She's thinking about psychology or psychiatry, and I'm thinking about accounting or any other business. So, not together. <laughs> All right. There are some familiar faces at the Pathways uh, Fair today at Mohawk College. Karen Callahan. Karen, how are you? I haven't seen you in ages. I'm terrific. I've been, I was a faculty member here since 1984. I graduated from Mohawk College in 1978. 
and I've been at Charles Sturt University now for the last five years, welcoming students who have their ECE diplomas from any Ontario college, but we prefer Mohawk, All right. to, to complete their uh, an honours bachelor degree in as little as two years. So if I've done my math right, you have been in post-secondary education for 30 years. I started when I was four, what can I say? Right. Now, I, when you started, there, there was this sort of mentality that you either went to college or university. Yes. That's, have, have you seen that change? Absolutely, and I think it's interesting because sometimes we need outsiders to come in to ask questions about our systems. And, and having an Australian university show up in Ontario did shake things up a little bit because they, they saw this diploma as being very powerful, very useful, and gave full credit. And so in that time since they've come, we've seen more universities starting to let down some of those barriers that they had and be much more respectful and welcoming of college diplomas. And I think there's a lot more traffic in both directions such people with their degrees coming to college too. So while we've got you here, is there any truth to the rumor that you're going to triple the size and the the budget and the staffing for the public relations department at Mohawk College? Do we have one of those? Well, the, the, this, cre this creates an awkward moment for us. <laughs> Jay, for you, anything you need. We have it on tape, so this is great. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. 